assalamu alaikum uh, welcome back after the break guys uh, now we are going to start our next module okay the module is all about the safe movement of people and vehicles in the workplace i hope so till now what we have discussed there is no question and uh, considering that i am moving <clears throat> i am moving further and uh, let us proceed with uh, our module 8.6 in which we are going to discuss safe movement of pe people and vehicle in the workplace. Commonly, we call it man, if we have to have, or in case if we are having man machine interface on our job site, how we are going to manage that. First thing come first, what are the typical risks relating to the vehicle movement? We, we can have loss of control. Why? Maybe because of the driver error, environmental fog, okay, visibility, okay, or any kind of mechanical reasons like brakes could not be applied. Fine. Next is overturning, maybe literally or longitudinally. In case if we are having vehicle, it can turn over on this side, considering this is the front side. Turn over on this side, this side, or on the front side. For example, if we are having a forklift. Then next point is collision. Collision with other vehicles. For example, on the blind spot, one vehicle is coming from here, one vehicle is coming from there or already parked over there with the vehicle or pedestrian in the same way on the blind spots or some kind of fixed object. So we are having these three different kind of uh, risks relating to vehicle movement. One of them is loss of control. One of them is overturning. One of them is collision. Considering all these, there is a group exercise. Group exercise says what are the factor or what are the reasons? You can say what are the reasons for a forklift truck to earn overturn? We have to discuss about it that, for example, if I am the one who is operating a forklift, why it would be overturning. Regarding that, in our module uh, 5 or 6, we have seen uh, in our IG1, sorry, in our IG1, we have seen uh, why the forklift trucks are overturning. We had uh, watched a detailed video regarding that and we had discussed a lot of things over there we are now just going to revise all of those reasons first of all it could be turn while uh, it could be turn over while being driven too fast on corners do you remember that was the that was basically the first accident in the video we have watched okay then uh, uneven loading of the folks okay if the folks are uneven of course, the material would not be stored properly and which it could cause the instability of the forklift. Then driving our potholes, if we are having holes on the ground, okay, or on the floor and you are going to drive the forklift over there. Then driving with the load elevated, especially cornering, whenever we are taking sharp turns, okay, or if we are having blind spot over there and we have lifted the load and we are moving, uh, using the uh, we are moving and uh, we have lifted the load above the axle height then it can cause turnover or tilt over then uh, uneven tire pressure for the forklift which we are which we are having pneumatic forklift okay in that scenario we can have it then driving across a slope rather than straight up down straight up or straight or moving down the fall line for example uh, if we are having any kind of slope over there okay and uh, then in those scenarios if the forklift is forklift doesn't move down or up in a straight way but actually it is turning from here then the forces which would be exerting on this side that would be the reason for the forklift to turn over then excessive braking or immediate braking while driving fast play in especially with curbs when we are having curbs are basically those uh, you can you know if we are if we are having any kind of 
uh, road along with the road we are making some kind of footpath footpath is usually made uh, like uh, 10 cm 20 cm above the above the road okay the the points which are basically or the points or the small wall or the small uh, blocks which we put over here so that we can segregate the footpath or the pedestrian path from the from the road or which keeps it up and which basically secures both the areas this is what we call curves so in case if the if while turning it can hit over here okay at, at the curves so this is a collision or especially with the curves this is i mean if the forklift tire comes over here it hits the curb over here now over here what are the risk factor in case if we are operating a forklift and it can collide with the other vehicle or other pedestrian what what are the risk factors in case if you are driving too fast then there is a risk of collision in case if you don't have proper lighting if you are reversing without the help of any flagman banksman or signalman if you are having blind spots such as corners and entrances if you are having bad weather condition for example rain then it can cause slip and can hit some someone for example the object or the people or the other vehicle obstruct obstructed visibility if you are having uh, some kind of overloaded for example uh, in the forklift let me give you the example yes it would be the obstructed visibility okay then uh, sorry then poor design of pedestrian walkways and crossing points we already discussed it over here if you are not designed it properly then of course man machine interface would be there and forklift would be colliding with the other people next is lack of vehicle maintenance you don't maintain properly brakes are not there or brakes are there they are we cannot apply the brakes properly we are not uh, in, in, inspecting the vehicle properly or we are just filling up the inspection uh, checklist just by checking the points okay then of course in these it, it could happen then a silent operation of the machinery usually if the forklift is having if if the forklift is battery operated then you will not find any kind of uh, sound of the engine or uh, any kind of uh, noise over there so usually if it if it is coming let's say if someone is standing somewhere or is it, let me make it more easier if we are having silent operation then especially on the blind spots because we don't know about each other that who is coming from this side or if this guy is coming from this side he doesn't know that someone is coming from the other side so this collision could be over here okay this is because of the silent operation of the machinery for that purpose on these blind spots we are installing the mirrors so that the other person can see or both of the these guys they can see each other now <clears throat> there are some hazards which are related to non movement with which are occurring when the forklift or uh, vehicles are even not moving this is these these kind of hazards we usually call them non movement related hazard typically non movement related hazards are rising from when you are loading or unloading okay like manual and mechanical hazards if you are overloading exceeding the safe workload of the vehicle unloading tipping over uh, tipping op uh, operations could be there okay like you are as i mentioned loading or unloading securing to sheet a lorry okay you are not securing it properly you are not securing the load properly okay and uh, then it can fall down coupling attaching trailers once you are attaching the trailer with the truck then coupling is one of the hazard over there that if you don't couple it properly then it can get open while on the road and of course accidents would be there then maintenance work while working at height of course if you are working on the truck automatically 
you are working at height. Okay, next over here is uh, workplace transport control measure. <clears throat> Up till now, what we have discussed, this is about uh, movement as well as non-movement hazard. Now, how we are going to control that? The same thing, eliminate the hazard, create a safe place, create a safe person. We will go for the risk assessment, in the risk assessment, what do we do? Identify the hazard, identify the people who are at risk, evaluate the risk, record the significant findings and review. Let us have the risk assessment about it. In the risk assessment, we, what we have to do, we are going to measure necessary risk, necessary controls, okay? And uh, so that we can control the risk created by the vehicle operation and uh, for that purpose we have to categorize about it how we are going to categorize about it first category would be or first class would be the workplace environment second one would be the vehicle the third one would be the driver let us start discussing about all these one by one the workplace environment how we can make it safe first of all important thing is elimination vehicle free zones are there there is no vehicle no hazard is there you eliminated the hazard so we can have vehicle free zone pedestrian free zones could be there if there is no pedestrian no vehicle uh, no man machine interface would be there of course we are safe traffic route layout should be defined properly so that the people and the machine or man or machine they should be having proper segregation so that we should know that on first important thing only one way of traffic is allowed here on our project side and these are the crossing points so these are the points only where are uh, where we can have man machine interface otherwise we are having segregated areas for the people to walk on and there is no man machine interface and we are safe then marked walkways and crossings as i already have explained you that area should be properly marked, separate access point for both vehicles and people. Speed limits should be defined so that uh, operation could be smooth and uh, people can, so that operation could be smooth and vehicles should remain in control. Vehicle movement should be managed properly like by giving one way of uh, traffic route or uh, in case if we are having some kind of uh, two way traffic then we should be having enough uh, width of the road and we should be having proper flagman or uh, banksman over there which should be controlling the vehicle movement good good visibility is required for example proper lighting is required at night time signage should be there well lighted maintained roads or pathways are uh, required we have to avoid gradients or slopes okay so that vehicles should not be going over there upside or downside in case if we can manage that we should have it because over here there is a chance of vehicle overturn then barriers at changes in the level for example loading docks should be having some kind of barriers so people should not be getting fall or the equipment should not be getting fall or uh, we should not be having any kind of uh, man machine interface over there next uh, if you talk about the vehicle we should be having a safe vehicle for example we will be considering with the parking side rules for safe vehicle parking for a forklift truck especially apply the hand brake lower the forks and tip the mask forward remove the key do not obstruct a traffic route do not obstruct a pedestrian route do not obstruct any emergency escape route by the way these are some of the simple forklift parking rule which usually we are having on our job site and we are usually following these whenever we are making a plan for vehicle parking and uh, these points are usually included in the forklift truck and any other heavy equipment if uh, we are going to park it over there on our job site of course specific requirements would be different like uh, lower the forks and uh, tip the mask forward 
okay but these are the general precautions which would be remaining same for other heavy equipment as well now if we talk about the workplace environment uh, control measures have to be decided so that we can reduce the risk of accident from that from reversing the vehicles in case if we are going to reverse the vehicle how we are going to control that first of all avoid reversing by using one way system if someone let's consider this is your premises okay one truck who gets in from this side he should be moved in one way and he should be getting out from this point this is considered this is your gate okay so in this way we will be managing the one way traffic that one vehicle should be getting enter from one side should be getting exit from the other side in this way we would not be having any kind of issue with the reversing then second one the segregate pedestrian and vehicle you should be having segregate or separate path for pedestrian and vehicle we should be having good visibilities from the vehicles so that we can we should not be having any kind of blind spot or the area should be clear so that in case if the vehicles are over there they can see the operators or the people can see each other drivers can see each other reversing alarm and beacons should be there to warn the pedestrian or the other vehicle mirrors should be there to reduce the blind spots high visibility clothing for the people who are working around the vehicle or the equipment good lighting should be there so that the visibility could be clear banksman flagman should be there to guide to warn the other people and to guide the operators training for the drivers and pedestrian so that in case if they are trained we are creating basically the safe employees and in the if they are trained they should know they will know about the hazards of reversing if we talk about the safe vehicle first of all suitable for their intended use whatever the vehicle we are having it should be used only for its intended purpose suitable for the environment and condition of use for example a diesel um, engine forklift should not be used in the warehouse and uh, if, to use uh, inside the warehouse forklift should be battery operated okay and uh, maintained in safe working order uh, maintenance is required all the time only driven by trained and qualified staff for that purpose on our work permit system or while we are applying the work permit system we are checking the training as well as the certification and the qualification or you can say competency of the operator inspected routinely before use we are having two kind of inspection one is routine inspection before each use one is periodic inspection usually by third party next is a safe vehicle uh for the safe vehicle uh, the, the driver seat should be properly uh properly ergonomically designed and uh, in case if we are having any passenger allowed over there then his seat should be proper safe is because the reason is if we are having any kind of heavy equipment okay for example crane or for example for if then pedestrians are uh, sorry passengers are not allowed over there in case if we are having uh, other heavy equipment for example damper trucks then passengers are allowed over there of course there is proper space for them so then in case if uh, passengers are allowed proper seats should be there ergonomically designed seat belts should be there for both driver and the passenger roll bar or roll cage roll over protective structure you would have seen in some of the vehicle inside the vehicle there are some kind of bars or some kind of pipes are installed these are the roll over protective structure that in case if the vehicle rolls over then this protective structure would be protecting the vehicle to get compressed and the, in the passenger inside would be staying safe guard to protect the driver in the event of falling objects for example this one okay next horn should be there mirrors and or cameras to aid vision audible reversing alarm beacons or flashing light the other requirements are the other requirements are a simple and general requirement regarding the safe driver and the driver should be competent to drive the vehicle medical medically fit to drive for example his eyesight 
should be good and okay. Uh, provide with specific information training and instruction and the driver should be supervised so he should know about all kind of uh, sign boards he should know about all kind of site rules and regulation his induction training should be done so that he knows where he has to move what he has to do while he'll be staying on the job site he should know about the parking rules and regulations and in this way we are making the safe drivers over here what we discussed we discussed our module 8.6 and in 8.6 we discussed about the safe movement of people and vehicle in the workplace uh, starting from the beginning we discussed about the risk related to the vehicle movement in which we are having loss of control overturning collision then we move to uh, we, we move to see different reasons for the forklift truck to turn over okay and then we see what are the reasons for the collision then we see non-movement related hazard that if the heavy equipment or if the vehicles are play, parked somewhere then what kind of hazards could be there and then we have seen basically we perform the risk assessment and uh, we define the control measure, um, control measure starting from the elimination of the hazard creating a safe place creating a safe person or the safe driver risk assessment should have been done so that we can make the whole activity man machine interface safe in the risk assessment we divided the risk assessment into three main topic one of them was workplace environment vehicle and the driver in the workplace environment we discussed how we can make the environment safe how the vehicle should have been parked how we can make the driver safe and uh, then what are the control measures we have to implement the same control measures for in the same category like for the workplace environment for safe vehicle and for safe drivers so we have identified different control measures for safe drivers for safe vehicle okay and the workplace environment so it was our topic for uh, a topic 8.6 and it was all about the man machine interface our next topic is 8.7 that is work related driving work related driving what is that let us start reading it over here and it would be clear for us see uh, we are having so many accidents occurring on the public roads while driving on business for example ambulance for example the people who are who are doing the job for their organizations okay they stay on the road but they don't have any kind of specific health and safety legislation for these guys who are driving on the road because the, now they are not on their workplace actually this is their workplace road okay but uh, but uh, actually this is their workplace but they are not on their workplace okay so this yes this is an issue so that is why we don't have any specific health and safety legislation when these drivers they come to the job site yes rules started getting implement on these guys but when they are on the road then generic government rules are implementing on that on those guys so we should be having specific health and safety legislation and uh, it should be managed like any other uh, risk or any other uh, hazard we have to manage them for that purpose we are having ISO 39001, which is road traffic safety management system standards are there made by International Organization for Standardization. And this is by the way based on the PDCA cycle plan, do and check and act, which we discussed in IG1. Over here, what are the risk assessment factors we have to go for? Again, uh, the same thing identify the hazard identify who might be harmed and how evaluate the risk record the significant findings and review let us see what it says to us identify the hazard we have to identify the hazard what kind of hazards could be there like journey hazard driving hours work schedule stress weather conditions we need to consider all these and by the way we'll be discussing all these one by one then identify who might be harmed and how by the way drivers and all the others who are on the road evaluate the risk 
first of all if we are going to evaluate the risk eliminate the need to travel by the way when we are evaluating the risk what we are identifying we are identifying what would be the level of risk okay level of risk if it is high we have to bring it down <clears throat> to control that or in another way uh, in step 3 of the risk assessment we say evaluate the risk and record this uh, and control it and decide on precautions so in the evaluation we have identified that risk is high so what can we do we are controlling it by eliminating the need to travel you will not travel okay khalas no hazard right then second of course in some scenario elimination is not possible second one is travel by safer means for example driving by yourself or driving by taxi or using some kind of uh, railway then if road travel is there take sensible precautions make a safe person for example giving them or uh, conducting the defensive driving training for the uh, for all the drivers then record the significant findings what you have done how you are going to implement it and then finally review we are going to evaluate the risk was this one okay how we are going to evaluate the risk we are going to evaluate the risk by in, in uh three different ways by the way from the driver point of view vehicle or the journey point of view it it is saying that if the road is uh, road travel is preferred option then we have to look at the driver the vehicle and the journey okay and uh, we have to control all the factors all the hazards which we will be identifying regarding a driver regarding the driver what we have to do we have to go to check his competency sorry we have to go to check his competency regarding driving license if he is having experience and ability to drive next is we will be going for the training of the driver advanced or defensive driving training courses vehicle safety pre use inspection usually these are the part of your defensive driving training okay after that a fitness and health what about his medical examination his eyesight check uh, eyesight checked or not and uh, drugs policy that if the person is taking drugs and driving yes or no we will be identifying uh, regarding the vehicle what we have to go we have uh, what we have to check we have to go for the suitability check and the condition check suitability suitability that where we are going this vehicle is suitable over there or not for example in the desert are we having 4x4 or not okay we should be having minimum standard requirements should uh, minimum standard requirements should be met while we are checking the suitability what about the insurance and valid regulatory certificates if private vehicles are used how we are checking simple insurance certificates are there what about the condition vehicle is properly maintained pre use inspections are there in case if there is some kind of defects did we report them so that we can fix them before we are taking them on the road yes or no we will see that next is the safety equipment that in case if we are uh, if we are taking the vehicle on the road are we having seat belt airbag restraints are there or no do we have it fire extinguisher do we have it okay and by the way over here if you don't have fire extinguisher or triangle in your vehicle there is uh, you will get the ticket usually so if you don't have keep this in your vehicle all the time then safety critical information should be there we should know about the tire pressure headlight and restraint adjustment for example in case if required ergonomically we will be checking that adjustability of the seat position and our posture that we should be in relax but it should not be in a way that should be giving us some kind of work related upper limb disorders okay then mobile phone use policy should be clearly explained to the work to the, to the driver and uh, he everyone should know that either he has to park the vehicle or otherwise he has to park his phone regarding the journey uh, we will be uh, we will be going first for for the routes avoid hazard for example don't go in the town centers if you have alternate route from outside the town choose that okay instead of going 
from the center of the town. Next, select a low risk road. For example, motorways are good to be used because we don't have uh, hazards over there so like animals or pedestrian. Avoid road works. If we are having road works, try to avoid that. Second important thing is all about scheduling. How do you schedule your journey? Avoid peak times, like uh, times in which we are having more traffic on the road, like office timing from eight, I will say eight to 10, okay, morning, and then three to five afternoon. So we will try to avoid these timing, avoid fatigue time, like two to 6 a.m. or two to 4 p.m. These are the fatigue time. Then flexible deadlines should be defined for the person to reach over there like uh, if he ha if the person has to reach there at 9 a.m if the person would be there at 10 or 11 no issues because sometimes you are having traffic on the road so flexible deadlines should be defined for the in the schedule for the driver so that they should not be in a hurry next is time Time should be realistic as we just have defined about the flexible deadlines. Time should be realistic. For example, we have to check the route, weather, and the brakes, how many times we will be applying the brakes. Uh, sorry, how many times we will be having the brakes on the road, uh, like, uh, for example, refueling, okay, or for example, lunch or dinner or, for example, prayer. So we, we must be considering all these things. The resting brakes should be defined for all the people uh, who are driving on the road. Statutory requirement, for example, lorry drivers at GV, high, heavy good vehicles. For them, uh, we should be having state requirements or law requirements. Next is about the distance, distance you are going to travel. Uh, in case if it is long distance, then use other transport, for example, railways. And uh, if it is not excessive, then okay, you can drive by yourself. If it if it is not uh, if it is not excessive, okay. Weather conditions must be considered. Reliable weather forecast should have been uh, seen or consulted before we are on the road. Next, no driving. Additional safety advice in bad weather. In case if we are having bad weather, first important thing is not to drive there. Okay, in case if we cannot avoid or while we were on the road, then uh, unpredicted bad, uh, weather condition appeared over there, then we will be taking additional safety precautions. And for, by the way, usually in the training of defensive driving, we used to communicate all the additional safety uh, condition for bad weathers. Next over here is uh, all about the hazard of electrical and hybrid vehicle. If we are having electric or hybrid vehicle, what are the hazard? First of all, their operation will be silent because they are running on the batteries. Okay, unexpected engine startup would be there. If you just press the button or accidentally, if the button is pressed, the engine would be starting up. And sometimes you even don't know that the engine is started already. How? Because it is battery operated. Next is a high voltage electricity or uh, this is what we will be having present all the time in your vehicle because the vehicle would be hybrid or would be electric. Okay, so high voltage electricity would be present all the time inside your vehicle and charge retention. Yes, charge would be remaining. Uh, because we are already having, as we just have discussed, that high voltage electricity would be there. So, of course, charge would be there because batteries are there. Batteries themselves create some hazards. For example, manual handling hazards are there. Okay. And in the same way, batteries can get explode. Okay. So, yes, we are having hazards of batteries. What about their disposal? manual handling we just have learned about it and then magnetic forces it is a usual phenomena that if we are having a wire in which current is flowing it contains electromagnetic field automatically when our vehicles are working on electricity and magnetic fields are being established in different part of the vehicle so yes magnetic forces are there now this the, all these things are 
becoming more complicated by remote key operation system okay what does that mean the means that the key doesn't need to be in the ignition for the vehicle to be operational because these are push start engines so you don't have to insert the key in the ignition point and just by bringing the key closer to the uh, machine closer to the vehicle or by putting in the console of the vehicle if you are putting the key over there okay automatically if you just press the button the vehicle would be starting so it means that if the key is closer to the vehicle vehicle would be having this 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 so these are some of the hazards of electrical or hybrid vehicle so this is our uh, basically this is our whole topic uh, topic 8.7 and in this uh, topic what we have discussed in this module what we have discussed we discussed about the work related driving as well as the electric and hybrid vehicle in the work related driving what we what did we discuss we discussed how we are going to manage the work related road safety we are having one traffic manage uh, traffic road traffic safety management system given by iso which works on the principle of plan do check and that and it uh, and also we discussed about the risk assessment factors in which we identified the hazard identify who might be harmed evaluated the risk and we recorded the significant you can record the significant finding and you will be reviewing that and regarding the evaluation of the risk we worked on the driver the vehicle and the journey okay and in in the vehicle we had discussed different factors like suitability of the vehicle condition of the vehicle safety equipment to be present in the vehicle safety critical information uh, for the uh, regarding the vehicle ergonomically designed vehicle and mobile phone use requirements in the vehicle if or while driving the vehicle then we discuss the journey in the journey we discussed about the route scheduling time distance and weather conditions so this is what we discussed regarding the work related driving next we discussed about the hazard of electrical and hybrid vehicle that if we are having the electrical or hybrid vehicles then what kind of hazards we are having while uh, working with or while using the electric or hybrid vehicles all the time we need to have proper maintenance for uh, hybrid vehicle or electrical vehicle so that we can we can have less hazardous situations as <clears throat> as we are having a range of hazards for hybrid vehicle so proper maintenance is required so we should not be having any kind of short circuit or any kind of uh, fire or explosion in the hazard because of electrical short uh, because of the electrical hazards so here is the uh, here is the summary of the whole chapter what i am going to do i am going to give you the summary not from here by physically taking you to all the slides and to give you the summary and uh, here what did we discuss in the whole lesson in the whole lesson we start basically element eight was all about general workplace issues and in the general workplace issues what we what did we discuss we discussed about health welfare and work environment requirements it was our first module then in our second module was working at height okay and in working at height we mainly focus on, on mainly focused on avoid working at height preventing the falls and minimizing the distance and consequences of fall where uh, in this topic we had discussed uh, a, a lot of things and uh, including scaffolding ladder safety trestles staging boards and the mobile scaffold and uh, also we discussed the mobile elevating working platform after that we move to uh, discuss the sec uh, the third module that was working in the confined space we learned hazards and controls while working and the safe work method for working in the confined space then we, we move to the lawn working in the lawn working we discuss what are the hazards of working lawn and what how we are how we are uh, how we can control them then we discuss the slip trip and fall hazards where we discuss different methodologies First, we discuss the difference between slip and trip hazard. Then we discuss different methodologies, basically hazard and different methodologies to control the slip and trip hazard. 
then we move to the safe movement of people and vehicle in the workplace which in which we discuss man machine interface okay we discussed mainly we kept forklift as an example and we discussed the whole topic by creating a safe vehicle safe person and uh, safe work safe workplace safe vehicle and safe uh, driver then we move to the work related driving in which we have discussed uh, managing work related road safety we discussed about the road traffic safety management system iso 39001 uh, then we move to the risk assessment factors in which we again discuss the driver the vehicle and the journey and after that we discuss the hazards of electric and hybrid vehicle so it was the uh, element 8 of ig2 i hope so everything would have been well understood still if you are having any question you can ask me and uh, i would really appreciate that that's all from my side for today guys and uh, see you tomorrow with our next lesson thank you so much